All right, so we'll wrap up the recap with that. And uh, now we'll look at the daily chart to see, you know, what uh, might be coming, what might be in store as we move forward. So I know that, uh, you know, it looks like the world's falling apart. And uh, this is very, you know, unprecedented. And it's, it's a shock to the system. And at this point, um, things look horrible. But I think they always look horrible when you're in the middle of it all, you know. Um, so unless the world is truly falling apart, you know, the markets are here to stay. And um, there's a lot of panic right now. And there's, uh, you know, big selling taking place. So obviously, uh, you know, the bigger picture intermediate term bias are unchanged. You know, they've been bearish. They are still bearish. But at the same time, we can't discount the fact that the markets are way overdone to the downside. You know, could there be more selling? Sure. But look at how the market has played out over the last few weeks and today. Look at the level of buying that came into the market as well. So, you know, at this point, given where the market is trading, um, it's questionable how much more downside there is. You know, I mean, could, could we go down to, you know, this swing low of around, you know, 2350 or so? I mean, possibly, even given the level of volatility, it wouldn't take a whole lot to get there. But I just think the market's so overdone to the downside that any bit of good news could spark an upside move. And, um, that's why, you know, we need to be very vigilant and not get overly, um, not overly buy into all the panic. So what I mean by that is, you know, don't be so bearish that when the market does eventually turn that you completely miss the move or even worse, you end up shorting all the way up, right? So it's an unusual situation. You know, we don't really have a similar scenario that we can look to over the last 20, 30 years, at least nothing like this, you know, where it's this global um, health issue that's affecting pretty much every industry. Uh, in the past, you know, we've had uh, financial crises that have been focused on, you know, a handful of industries, right? But this is affecting everything. Uh, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's a big deal. And it's, it's affecting almost every industry out there. But despite all that, you know, we will get through it. I mean, the world is not ending and we will get through it and you know businesses and world leaders and the popular I mean, you know everyone will figure this out uh, eventually things will be okay as bad as things look right now eventually things will be okay and when they are and the panic selling is done then the only place to go will be back to the upside now i'm not saying we're going to go back to all-time highs but, you know, I just don't want to get overly fearful in this market where, you know, all we're doing is shorting. I mean, granted, there are amazing shorting opportunities, but there are also good long opportunities, right? And as day traders, we need to be able to take advantage of both sides, not just focusing on one. And... Uh, if the market does continue selling off even more, it's just going to be running into, you know, bigger and bigger support as it goes lower, right? So, I mean, like this 2350 area, you know, you can see is like, you know, the bottom of this balance, you know, you have kind of this breakout from 2017-18 or something that takes place here. You have this major swing low that uh, can attract buyers. And uh, again, you know, unless... 
the markets are just completely falling apart and uh, the whole system is going down the drain, which I don't think is the case. Um, I think these are still spots where buyers can step in. And usually what happens with these things is eventually, um, you know, the bad news doesn't have the same level of impact on the market. So, you know, bottoming out is typically a process. It's not something that just happens on one day, but it's something that we are going to be looking out for. You know, I know that things look really bleak and uh, certainly the markets might end up going a bit lower before they find, uh, you know, a short-term floor. But, you know, this down here, 2350s, all the way up to even, you know, today's low. I mean, this is long-term. This is a decent support area. And um, buyers can still be active as the market tries to process this area. So the strategy is to short the bounces or, you know, if there's big momentum in real time, then perhaps look for balance breakdown opportunities. Uh, but I think risk management is going to have to be tighter going forward. And, um, you know, we're going to have to stay on top of things here because things can change fairly quickly. A new balance and range can establish. Um, you know, we can still get big bounces along the way. So that's the environment we're in. You know, it's not it's not about like me dictating a bias or, you know, I'm not trying to project my personal opinion into this. I'm just trying to be objective with like, hey, what are we dealing with, right? We got a big balance breakdown. We already knew sellers were in control, you know, so no surprise there, but at the same time, we talked about how bear market bounces can be extremely strong and we want to take advantage of those or at least not get run over by those. So that's still the theme. The theme just becomes even more important as we push down into even more significant support. So, you know, in the event that we do continue heading down, we'll be looking for buyers to be active in this area, you know, roughly 23, 50 to 60 or something, right, down there. And then we'll see how today's low gets managed. You know, does the market break and hold below it? Does it start to kind of reject lower prices? You know, we're going to be looking for a change of character. And that's not to say that we're predicting a change of character. It's just an awareness looking for it. If it presents itself, we want to detect it and not be blindsided. But if it doesn't, if the market continues showing panic and the Russell keeps selling off and, you know, things keep heading lower, then that's fine too. You know, again, we're not predicting a reversal. We're saying that, hey, this is what it might look like. Here are the signs to look out for. You know, if there is a change in character, let's at least be open to that idea as well. And then on the upside, the um, 2700 to, you know, roughly 2730, um, 37 or so, you know, that's going to be the inflection point, right? 27, 34 quarter, 37 quarter was the launching point in the overnight session. And um, 2700 to 08 kind of marks the bottom of this large balance and even this, you know, the recent balance over here and then, you know, the larger balance that looks kind of like this. So below this area, we know that sellers can be more dominant and the first sign of buyers achieving any kind of um, control is going to be if we get a break back above this area. So that's what we're dealing with, guys. You know, it's a hell of a market, but um, that's what it is. Daniel's saying, is it safe to say that the Russell could tip us on the next big direction as it's below its session of 2350 or its version of 2350? Um, I think that, you know, look, Russell is the most kind of beaten up market right now. 
Um, it, it's been the weaker market for quite some time, right? We've talked about that in prior sessions. And uh, it's the one that's absolutely gotten hammered. I mean, it's the one that, you know, before the market opened today was uh, getting absolutely crushed. Um, it's the market that hit its own circuit breaker, you know, before um, the others. And uh, I think that if we start to see some stability in that market, you know, that would be a bit of a tip off. Or if the market, if the Russell just kind of stops selling off at the same rate and gains some stability, yeah, I mean, you know, it could be helpful. I mean, here's, uh, here's like the larger time frame chart for uh, the Russell. And, uh, you know, you can see, I mean, it's, you know, testing this um, big balance area from 2014 to like 16, right? And then we have this major swing low in the Russell around the 950 mark. Um, you know, yeah, Russell's like way overdone to the downside as well. And who knows if it's going to get here or not. But uh, yeah, you know, we're going to keep an eye on it. All right, guys, that is a wrap for today. And um, lastly, before we sign off, I'll just say that, you know, I know there's a lot of panic, fear in the market, and not just in the market, I mean, you know, in in society overall right now. And, you know, it is a um, concerning time, of course. But at the same time, uh, I think that, um, especially for us as traders, I think we should be a little more... Um, a little more objective with, you know, how we're approaching things, but at the same time, be thankful that, you know, we can actually do this from home, that, uh, you know, a lot of the hardships that um, people are going to have to face right now, employees, businesses, you know, on the ground, I mean, it's, it's going to get pretty bad. And um, I think the fact that we're able to do this from home, um, you know, makes it at least easier to deal with for us, right? So as challenging as uh, trading is and um, as difficult as it can be at times, uh, I think we also have to feel grateful for the markets and what they allow us to do. And, you know, the fact that we can actually even do this with technology and you know, ride this out, um, probably, you know, in, in the easiest way possible as compared to most other professions is something to consider. All right, guys, hope you guys are staying safe. Wish you guys all well. And um, we'll catch up tomorrow morning in the trade plan. Take care. Good night.